Weight Loss 101 Part 1 Calories, Macros and the Importance of Training If you got into the fitness game for the goal of losing weight and feeling better in your own skin, you cannot afford to do something wrong. Weight loss must be done through a well-structured plan of action as certain approaches can lead to side effects and unwanted weight gain rebounds. So, without further ado, let's see what actually matters about weight loss. First things first, the so-called caloric deficit is the first and most important principle of weight loss. During a period of time eating in a caloric deficit, you consume less energy from food than you need to maintain your body weight. This allows the body to burn more fat than it stores, thus reducing the weight due to the deficit of energy. However, during prolonged periods of eating in a deficit, the metabolism slows down and what once was a deficit becomes maintenance, meaning you stop losing weight. This is why a moderate caloric deficit of 400 to 500 calories per day is a rational approach. Not only will this moderate deficit help you preserve your metabolic rate, but it will also help you retain lean body mass. Lean body mass is every tissue in the body except fat, including, but not limited to, muscle tissue, bones, nerve tissue, organs, etc. Those types of tissue also degrade during weight loss, which means that retaining as much as possible should be your main goal. The second thing to take care of for the goal of optimal weight loss is the content of your caloric intake. Your most important macronutrients are protein and fats, as they are essential for the body and are involved in a variety of physiological processes. The recommended daily intake for protein is about 1 gram per pound of body weight, while fat is set at 0.35 to 0.45 grams per pound. After calculating protein and fats, you give the rest of the calories to carbohydrates. Though carbohydrates are not essential for the body, they can be your best friend during intense workouts and their lack can lead to suboptimal performance. Now, let's say you weigh 190 pounds and you burn 2,500 calories per day to maintain your weight. If you wanted to lose weight, you'd need to consume about 2,000 calories. Out of those 2,000 calories, you'd have 190 gram of protein, 760 calories, and 70 gram of fats, 630 calories. With a total of 1,390 calories coming from protein and fats, you have 610 calories remaining in your daily intake. Those 610 calories can go to carbohydrates. To calculate the exact carbohydrate intake, you simply divide the remaining calories by four, because carbs have four calories per gram. And so, in this case, you'd have about 150 grams of carbohydrates. This carbohydrate intake will help you optimize performance during intense training. Engaging in intense resistance training workouts will allow you to stimulate the muscles to an extent that will help you retain their mass and tone them up. The general guidelines for training during the weight loss phase are to avoid reaching hard failure and overall, train at a moderately high intensity. Because intensity is demanding and you are in a deficit of energy, you may experience suboptimal recovery and exhaustion when pushing too hard while losing weight. As to your nutrition plan, you have to calculate your individual daily energy expenditure based on factors like age, gender, height, weight and activity levels. We recommend using an online calculator like the one on traininginthebay.com and then working out your calorie and nutrient targets as per our instructions. Ultimately, when you reach your weight loss goals, you should aim to remain active and eat good food while gradually increasing food intake and training intensity. In part two of this series, we'll talk about rational food choices and what you should use to make up your daily caloric intake. See you there.